Greetings, brothers and sisters. Um, so, so many people sent me this. I've made fun of Alec Baldwin in the past, and, you know, I've done a number of Alec Baldwin videos. <laughs> so, when Alec Baldwin shoots a prop gun, killing one, injuring another on the set of Rust, the film's director of photography, Helena Hitchens, 42, was killed, and director Joel Souza, 48, was injured on the New Mexico set. And so, um, producer and actor Alec Baldwin fired a prop gun that killed at le killed a woman and injured a man on the set of the movie Rust in New Mexico. Souza was taken to the hospital. I'm not sure if he was just um, as part of their they were you know filming I guess, and he ended up doing this. And you know, Alec Baldwin shoots two people, one fatally during prop gun mishap, uh, mishap on set of film rust. And so I have just a few things to say about this. I've talked about this in terms of all these Hollywood liberals, Alec Baldwin included, that are anti-gun and anti-violence. Alec Baldwin, I don't know if he's anti-violence because he's been in some scuffles and things. He's kind of aggressive. But in terms of, um, you know, the Hollywood, all these, you know, pseudo-liberals that claim to be anti-gun, anti-violence, and then they're in these movies that are violent, right? Who's promoted guns more than Hollywood? Who's glorified guns more than Hollywood, right? It's been a big part of the Hollywood, you know, movie scene, and these liberals are all in these movies. Like there's that woman, um, uh, there's that woman, um, Julianne Moore, who I covered. She was really big into, like, anti-gun sort of legislation and then I showed pictures of her holding guns in movies right so here it is this is the front page of the New York Post this is the set I guess he plays some sort of western person um and this is the woman who was killed I guess and so again this shows you take guns out of your movies take violence out of your movies right like I saw on YouTube the other day like YouTube has a lot of policies about you know, in terms of demonetization and also in terms of community guidelines. But there's this thing that's, there's this new sport, and I crap you not if you have not seen it. But it is men and women who stand across from each other, defenseless, and they slap each other as hard as they can. And it almost always results in somebody getting knocked out, right? It's multiple slaps, undefended, where you're just sitting there, with your hands down, getting slapped across the face, you know, and I somehow like to watch it. I don't know why, but I've watched it on Facebook and for, and you, and YouTube recommended one of these videos to be the other day. And it's really violent and kind of pointless. And, you know, people are probably suffering concussions and brain damage and all kinds of things. Brutal. Like if you've seen this thing and I'm not recommending it, I'm just saying, you know, like, stop the, if you're going to be against violence, then stop promoting it. Stop freaking, you know, whatever it is, right? And so um, this is like part one. So that's the first point. Like Hollywood has said over and over again, celebrities, oh, let's get rid of violence. Then, then get rid of violence. The other thing is what I said about Wuhan and COVID, that if this is a biological weapon or something that's leaked, then you guys got to stop messing around with diseases because think about what COVID has done. And again, I'm going with the official story here. But in terms of prop guns, I think it was Bruce Lee's son, the guy who starred in the Crow movie, that was shot. Didn't he get shot by a prop gun in, in the Crow? It's happened before. Prop guns have gunpowder in them. They need to make an explosion. And every once in a while, they act like a real gun and so get rid of that right like you know they don't work like there's a chance of somebody actually dying from a prop gun so they're no longer prop guns right there's like playing russian roulette because this has happened on movie sets before so you know <laughs> i mean to get rid of it find something else right you know just edit in the sound but stop uh, using prop guns like the same thing i mean you know in general um, so, you know, but it, it shows you the fraudulent nature of Hollywood. That's the first piece to this video. Let's go to Jojo Magoo here. So I'm not covering this whole thing. Jojo looking great as usual here. 
Um, I just happened to turn this on for a brief moment. I was waiting for my wife, I think, whatever it was, last night. I saw something so funny here. Like I'm making, a, I got along, I sort of answered some questions that people had or comments uh, or re, a reaction to comments in the Journey series. I got an epilogue to the Journey series coming out in the next couple of days. And so, um, you know, and I'm going to give people a chance. It was a long, almost eight hour video at the end that people are still probably watching. I mean, I can't imagine how many days it'll take for people to watch an eight hour video. So, um, I don't know. Like I just, it's, those things are out of my hand, but anyway, I want to make a quick video here and then I'll be taking, um, some time off or whatever. There'll be some stuff coming that, um, over the next couple of days, but, um, here it is, right? and changing the circumstance for the middle class and working class in America that came as a consequence of a single piece of legislation. Mm -hmm. I got a portrait of Roosevelt in my office, okay? Social Security is not anything like it is today when he passed it. Yeah. It evolved, it moved, it grew. It moved, it evolved, it's grooving. It's, this isn't it. It's leading up to it, but I just... He's moving, he's grooving, like he's getting into it. He's going, who do he do? So I'm prepared to do the things that can get done now that can begin to change the lives of ordinary Americans to give them a fighting chance and come back and try to get others later. Let's talk about another one of those things. This is Sandra Gutman, an English professor at... Woo, Sandra Gutman, she's an English professor, woo. At Loyola University, also a Democrat. Sandra, what's your question? And by the way, you got another English professor who teaches writing here. <laughs> Thank you for taking my question. <laughs> Mr. President, we've heard in the news that the proposal for two years of free community college may be cut from your economic package. Um, an educated citizenry is absolutely crucial to solving complex problems like climate change. Exactly. Woo! She gets it. Woo! Woo! Jill gets it. Woo! Mask up, Jill. Woo! Uh, and the systematic um, inequities in this country. Uh, we hope that this is not cut from the package, but if it is, what can you do to ensure that all Americans can get the education that they need to face these issues? First of all, Professor, you made a very profound point. I'm not, I'm not being uh, sarcastic. And that He's not being sarcastic. He's not like crapping all over you here. This isn't the part. The part's coming up there, but I, I didn't see this part yet. Uh, but I know the part's coming up because I saw it. And it's so funny. So, you know, but he's not being sarcastic here. He, he's, he's, on, he's on board with this woman. That is, and Jill uses a slightly different phrase. Any country that out-educates us will out-compete us. Any country that out-educates will out-educates out will out-compete us. You have the vast majority of the 37 major countries in the world, economies. We rank. He's struggling. I mean, he's just, he's losing it even more. You can see it. 35 in our investment in education. We're in a situation where, if you, if you think about it, when we, what caused us to move ahead and, and, and dominate the 20th century, in the late 1900s, in the early 1900s, late 1890s, we came up with, said, 12 years of free education. That was revolutionary at the time. I mean, seriously. Now, if we were sitting down today and saying, you know, we've got to put together an education system, mm -hmm. Raise your hand if anybody thinks 12 years is enough to compete in the 21st century. So Nobody's raising their hands. We need more than 12 years. So that's why what I propose is free, child, free, school, free school for every three- and four-year-old in America. Now, free school. Let's get them out. Like infants. Let's start educating them in the womb. Let's get the mother to sit there. You know, we can, uh, she can be on Instagram or something, and let's educate the kids in the womb. Let's get them started earlier, pre-womb, right? Let's try to contact their souls before they even get down there and start teaching them ABCs. I want kids reading by the time they're six months old. No matter what their background, all the data shows that no matter what home they come from, they increase exponentially their prospects of succeeding all the way through 12 years of school. You know, you know all the statistics. The st you know, it, it gets kids out of their home and, and away from their parents even earlier. Like there's a teaching in the heartfulness system, you know, Master Chargy says that, um, well, here I can read the exact quote. So here it is. It's nice that you have free time with, with our, it's a son of a, a mother. Little babies must have all their time with mother 
and even when they are six or seven years old, should not be separated for long. This is what we feel here in India, and I think makes it makes them feel less lonely and frightened when they grow up. Love is such a wonderful thing, and if 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 and if one is loved right from the cradle, such a person can be anything in life. The more and more I see the power of love, the more I wonder at it. People laugh at love, but it is the most potent force in the world, like a small jet of water constantly falling on the hardest rock can wear it away. So love, patient, faithful love can overcome any resistance and any power and any other power in the world without corrupting and demeaning that which it conquers. And so, you know, every species of mammal, every, you know, every living species has a way of dealing with the separation of the child from the mother, right? At some point, the child leaves the mother. And so it's really a matter of when. And I think that, you know, they're trying to rush it. I, you know, five or six years old might be too, too young, right? In terms of um, what charge is saying here, which I agree with, but they want to move it, you move it younger and younger here. That's, uh, you know, separate the mother from the child, get him into school. You know, we all know that school is not great, right? Statistics go that if you come from a home where there's no books in the home and a single mom or a single dad, they don't, they're not well-educated, they don't talk a lot, the kid from a middle class, average middle-class home versus that home will go to school having heard one million more words spoken than the child who didn't. Yeah. A gigantic disadvantage. Mr. President, the, so, the, the question was on the, the com, on community college. No, I, no, I, which, which, which <laughs> <laughs> I, I saw, that's what I saw. I tuned in. He was just going on that rant at the end about, you know, kids who are in disadvantaged homes hear less words than kids in, you know, advantaged homes. And, you know, and I watched Anderson Cooper like, so like, dude, you're not, you're not answering the question. <laughs> Let's watch that again. That's just so great. A gigantic disadvantage, Mr. President. The, so, the, the question was on the the com, on community colleges, no, I, no, I, which, which which was a big campaign promise that that you made. You talked about that along oh, the I, campaign I, trail. I, yeah, and I'm, I'm going to get it done. He's going to get it done. Like you're going to answer the question. How are you going to get it done? You lost track of what you were even talking about, bro. And if I don't, I'll be sleeping alone for a long time. But here- <laughs> He's getting kicked out of his bed by his education wife. Here's the deal. So far, Mr. Manchin and one other person has indicated they will not support free community college. He's finally answering the question. So he's blaming it on them, like why he can't get his agenda done. So what what I think we can get done is we can significantly increase the amount of money by 500 bucks uh, uh, payment for Pell Grants. And Pelgr- he's just not doing well. I mean, this guy's not making it. Like he's, you know, they didn't show, CNN didn't put the whole thing up on the internet. I had to find this from somebody else. And I should have taped it, but I just didn't, you know, think I was going to make a video on it. But um, like, he's just not, he's gone. Grants are available and they can provide for up to 30% of the cost of community college and or. And- so instead of free, you're going to get 30% in a Pell Grant. And or college help tuition so it's not going to get us there it's not going to get us the whole thing but it is a start i'm convinced absolutely positively convinced that we're going to be able to and by the way we have in the law in the legislation money for <coughs> community colleges that that deal with dealing with uh, uh apprenticeships mm-hmm. dealing with teaching people comp- particular skills that are not Getting, will not get you a two-year degree, but will teach you the skill. <clears throat> so I think we can get all of that done this time out. But I promise you, I guarantee you, we're going to get free community college in the next several years. What I mean, we, across the board. What, what? Yeah, you're not. Like, if you're not getting it here, you're not getting it, right? Like, you know, people are, are just, um, they're bailing on Jojo Magoo. It's like, you know, his time in the sun is over. And this is, you know, bad news is coming, right? Like, you know, we're in a time of uh, losing things, right? What was that conversation <clears throat> when you realized you weren't going to be able to get it in this bill at this time and you had dinner with Dr. Biden that night? What was that conversation like? How did you break that news? Well, the White House has a lot of bedrooms. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's got kids and so on. <laughs> 
And she went like this, <laughs> down the hall. All right. No, oh. look, it, it, it really makes a gigantic difference. And think of this. You have more countries in the world. Look, they put the question down here. What did the first lady say when you, she found out free community college was dropped from the plan? <laughs> Yeah, that is great in their suckiness. With having, providing college, I mean, providing professional education beyond 12. He can't, he can't articulate things anymore. His brain isn't connecting with his mouth. And, you know, I mean, he's struggling. Like he's just gone. He's, he can't do it anymore. Like he's, I mean, he was, he's been bad the whole campaign and, you know, but he's deteriorating right in front of everybody's eyes. And Kamala is like, nobody wants that, right? 12 years, we rank like, I think it's, don't hold me the number, I think it's 16 or 17 in the world. The United States of America, for God's sake. For God's sakes, we're 16th, we're not number one. This wonder, is about putting us in. Look at, they're all masked up there. In the game. This is uh, John Meche, he's a doctor. Okay, so I'm not going to do any more of this. You can see what's going on here. I thought that was funny. You know, he got lost and Anderson Cooper had to bring him back. Like Anderson Cooper's handling him here. And so it um, doesn't look good for JoJo. I haven't you know, seen him in a while. I've been doing other things, obviously. But, I mean, he's just, you know, he's, he's, a, he's becoming a shell of himself. And when he was great, he wasn't great, right? I mean, he's telling stories that have been proven false that his handlers have probably told him, hey, don't tell the stories anymore. But he just, you know, he can't discriminate anymore. He can't, you know, he's, his brain is just fried. And, you know, they're giving away our income, like the revenue that America has is around, is going to be around maybe $4 trillion this year. Inflation's taken off. Like it's, inflation's probably at 50 to 100%. And people, that's going to start hitting people left and right. And then there's just the, you know, people have COVID fatigue, all these things. And so um, he wants to spend money in this bill. They've already spent like $12 trillion and it's, we only make, you know, our income is around $3.54 trillion a year now. And so there's not enough money, and that, and that money's already accounted for. And so America's like just, we're just waiting. I mean, it's, the economy's gone, and, you know, I mean, it's just what I say. Like, it's a, there's a spiritual solution, and that's it, right? People can connect to God, but your lifestyle is no longer available. You know, your, your lifestyle is out of stock. Only spirituality will save this world. It's Paul Romano, definitely important for the apocalypse and the ascension. Everyone have a blessed day and be grateful.